Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to kitchens. It's that time of year again of course when food sees its approval rating shoot to new heights. And while I continue to look at the way in which British and American food varies wildly, the same is true of kitchens. Sure, some American kitchens on the whole might be larger than their British counterparts just by virtue of the fact that houses are. But for once, I'm not going to concentrate on size. Instead, today I'm going to stick a rubber gloved hand deep down into the details of how we use our kitchens. From etiquette to gadgets, here are five ways that British and American kitchens are very different. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but my homeland of Britain may or may not be obsessed with tea. We're so obsessed, in fact, that when everybody was worried about running out of toilet roll, we were clearing the shelves of PG tips. And our obsession with tea can be seen through the gadget we use to make it, the electric kettle. An electric kettle is a kettle that is electric. That is, you plug it into the wall. Now, I don't have British plug sockets where I live, so what you're seeing right now is not completely authentic. But the electric kettle at my house is made by the British company Russell Hobbs. You simply plug it in, put water in it, switch it on and wait for it to boil. Now any British people watching this might be thinking, how on earth do Americans make tea? Well firstly, Americans don't drink tea quite as much as British people. And secondly, even though America doesn't have a royal family, coffee is king. Not literally, that would be absurd. But for Americans who do drink tea or hot drinks that aren't coffee, they usually have stovetop kettles. They work much the same way as electric kettles except you don't plug them in and the only thing that you turn on is the stove. I have to say while I don't have a major preference between both types of kettles, there is something a little bit satisfying about a kettle that whistles. Plus, that way you know when it's done, even if you're in another wing of your house, another room of your house. Either way, when it comes to Britain, the electric kettle is not the only kitchen gadget that uses water. Washing machines in a kitchen? Sorry America, for most Brits, this is a harsh reality. I say harsh, most of us wouldn't want it any other way. When I was growing up, the washing machine was right there next to the kitchen sink. It was an easy way to consolidate chores and get chicken curry in your underpants. And it doesn't end there because a lot of British washing machines also contain a dryer in one machine. It's not a great idea because the dryer is usually rubbish. Hence why a lot of Brits still put their clothes out on a washing line. Across the pond look around most kitchens in the United States and you won't find a washing machine. You might sometimes find them in a kind of pseudo laundry room that's attached to the kitchen but not normally beneath the microwave. I do hope all of that sinks in and speaking of sinks that brings us on to this. Join me now and imagine a dystopian future in which humanity has run out of dishwashers. What would we do? Well, the answer to that question might depend on the country that you live in. For example, Americans would be more likely than Brits to hand wash their dishes under water running from a tap. On the other hand, Brits might be more likely than Americans to clean them in a sink filled with hot water. This is partly done to be more economical with water use, but it's also because British homes didn't, and in some cases still don't, have mixer taps. In other words, most British homes were equipped with separate hot and cold taps. And so cleaning dishes under a running hot tap might result in third degree burns. However, primed almost universally with mixer taps, which help them to regulate temperature, Americans don't have to worry about that. Additionally, American kitchen sinks often come equipped with gadgets that might seem alien in some British homes. For example, and this is one of my favorites, the garbage disposal. This is a mechanical feature inside plug holes that breaks up waste. It's also the cause of death for 57% of people in American horror films. And the other delightful gadget that's found in a lot of American sinks is the sprayer hose. This is kind of a pre-clean thing where you spray all of the gunk off the plate and then you clean your plate under regulated warm water. So okay, in this dishwasherless dystopian nightmare, both countries do at least have options, but what about when it comes to drying the dishes? In Britain, it's fairly normal not to rinse the soap off before letting the dishes dry on the drying rack. Once there, the soap, in theory, slides off or dissolves. It was hard to explain that to my American wife because Americans, for the most part, rinse off the soap with 
with tap water or if you're feeling lucky the sprayer hose and either leave it to dry in the drying rack or may or may not get to it straight away with a towel. Now I've never been passionately in favour of one method over the other but the argument often thrown forward for the British way is that rinsing can leave water stains and I suppose that's true if you're lazy and thinking about it I am. If I wasn't I probably wouldn't make use of these. Egg cups. What on earth is an egg cup? And I'm not exclusively throwing that question at Americans because Americans of a certain region or generation have often told me, oh, we had those growing up. I don't, that was really British, sorry. But the fact is most Americans are probably not familiar with egg cups and most certainly don't have them in their houses. On the other hand, according to a law that I just made up, it's illegal for British kitchens not to have one. We're even handed them at birth. The parents walk away with a baby, an egg cup and four boxes of PG tips. But what do we use them for? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is where the lazy part of Lawrence comes in. They house soft boiled eggs and these are soft boiled eggs that have had the top knocked off them. I've never been really good at that part. And what you do is you dip toast or bread soldiers into the egg. And it is the most amazing breakfast in the whole world and you're all wrong, shut up. Egg cups, I do realize that for some of you, you've just learned a new word. The perfect segue into this. Just to bring us full circle, there are of course many British and American word differences when it comes to food. I have done and will continue to do videos on that. But here's a short sample of variations in kitchen lingo. In Britain, whether or not the hot and cold taps are unified, tap is the word we go for. And while I have heard that word applied in the United States, Americans will often opt for faucet. And sometimes when the plumbing's bad and the water won't come out, you might have to force it. <laughs> Sorry, that joke only works in Britain. Anyway, whether it is tap or faucet, you will need one to do the washing up. Washing up, that's what Americans say when they just take five minutes to clean themselves. In Britain, that's our phrase for doing the dishes. And if we're not being lazy, we might dry the dishes by hand. In order to do this, we use what is known as a tea towel. In America, I've heard many variants on this, but you might be hard pressed to find somebody that uses the term tea towel. Instead, in Indiana, I think I most commonly heard dish towel. In my house, I don't know about anybody else's, these can often be found hanging from the oven. I don't know why I did that, because actually both countries use the word oven. But in Britain, we also call it a cooker. And that's something for which my wife has ridiculed me for 15 years. Thank you for watching this latest Vlogmas episode. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with all of my daily videos through Christmas. As ever, a big thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to support this channel and become a patron today, you can do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until tomorrow's video, goodbye. Mm -hmm.